Hey guys, this is Anthony, and today I'm going to be showing you how to read a credit report in this particular video. We are using Smart Credit. So I've logged into a current client's uh, credit report to show you the ins and outs of how, how to operate and uh, maneuver through this console. All right, so the first thing you want to do is this is the main homepage. And I want to come here to the 3B report. This is going to show all three credit bureaus for with smart credit. If you have a premium plan, you get uh, once a month, you get all three credit bureaus. Or if you go to smart credit um, by itself, it's going to pull TransUnion, which you can pull daily reports. But I'm going to go through the mechanics and uh, show you guys how to read this report in general. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, okay, the you can see they're using a bench score system, the FICO score, or I'm sorry, the credit scores are on the very top. All right, this person's a 736, 745, 729, right? Pretty decent rates. Uh, the date of the report, any names that he currently has, you can see that with Experian, he has multiple names. Uh, when somebody um, pulls your credits and they have uh, first started the, the entry with Robert, right, versus James in being the very beginning. You can see that both of them are being recorded every single time that uh, somebody misspells your name while uh, making an inquiry, it will show up in the back end of the report. This is where you want to go to annualcreditreport.com so you can see the full list of what that looks like. Um, date of birth, right, it all matches up together. And this is one thing to, to note. Um, it's important to make sure that the data from all three credit bureaus are all the same. Okay, you can see that, uh, let's just start here on current address, you know, the Hill Drive, Hill Drive, Hill Drive, I'm sorry, Street, it looks like it's the same. Then here they have the Main Street, but it's not here, right? It's not here either. So uh, TransUnion is picking up some type of um, address that the other two are not, or possibly this is buried between a hidden version, not the one that you're seeing with the credit monitoring. And here in Hoskins Road, and it's not on here. So again, we need to clean up uh, and dispute and remove these other addresses. We just want one address, one name, one social security number, and one phone number that's listed here. Here at the same point, you You just want one address, one name, one social security number, and one phone number that's listed here. Here at the same point, you can see he works for Queen City Catering Company. All right, we can then remove these other ones if possible. All right, there's no consumer uh, statements for TransUnion and Equifax, but here on Equifax, he has a fraud alert. Okay, so they're saying that if you have this fraud alert, do not uh, pull any credit without calling me first. Okay, so it's very much known that if you have a fraud alert, you need to remove that alert before you start applying for new credits. All right, next section here is a summary, right? How many total accounts they have, the open accounts, closed, delinquent, derogatory, so on and so on. So you can see this person has 75 accounts total on TransUnion, right? But 78 on Experian and 78 on Equifax. So there's a discrepancy saying, why is there three missing, right, from that from all most. Maybe the, the account holder, let's just say tr uh, SunTrust here, um, maybe they're not reporting to TransUnion, right? So we'll, we'll find that out moving forward, All right? So out of the total accounts, there's 34 that's open, 41 that's closed. This guy has some seasoning to his credit, right? He's most likely an older gentleman, has established credit, uh, long history, etc. So there's nothing to, uh, delinquent here, but it doesn't mean that it hasn't, you may not have um, current delinquencies. However, there may be previous years or months uh, that maybe is caught up that is showing, right? That's why it's showing it zero, right? Nothing delinquent, nothing derogatory up here. All right, so the balances, 599, 563, 563. So you can see there's, there's some uh, discrepancies here, correct? Right, 75 accounts, but there's 599,000, 78 accounts with 563. So a little bit of a difference there. So we're going to find out what happened, right? Two inquiries, 
six and two. So the summary of everything that's going on in this credit report is going to be listed right here. So going on to the first one, you can see this is a real estate account, right? So remember, there's four different types of accounts. We have uh, mortgage loans, auto loans, credit card revolving accounts, um, or even personal lines of credit, which is also revolving, and uh, auto loans. So the information here is, is important to understand, right? So number one, the account number, make sure they all match. And according to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, that all the information on a trade line with these accounts need to match, right? They all need to be exactly the same. A lot of credit repair companies will look for discrepancies between the, the reports here. And you know, nine times out of 10, we always find some type of discrepancy, right? The, the very first thing I'm seeing here, last time verified, 8-25-2017, right? Not, not over here. Now, of course, right here is paid. So this is a closed account, right? The account status, closed. Uh, dispute status means accounts not disputed. So he had, as you can see here, it's all green, which means the payment history for every single month that he's been reporting has been solid, right? But something's going on with Equifax that's not reporting anything there. So again, these are all small different discrepancies that you may want to look into. Date of last activity, 825-91 and 81, right? So all three credit bureaus have a little bit of a different uh, dates, right? So this is not factual information. Everything needs to be all the same, right? So this uh, this trade line, this account holder, I mean, this, this account um, issuer, SunTrust, is not reporting everything factual as we speak, right? So they closed it uh, and it's not reporting on these two. So these are all the account uh, details that go into your credit reports. And so high balance, what was the highest balance you ever had on this on this, um, this account? So essentially he has a loan when he started out for 192,850. Date of last activity, when was it last reported? Right, very much, uh, these two go um, hand in hand together. All right, so the balance owed, so he's pays agreed, most likely sold it or transferred it to another, uh, another account. Account description, so this is a joint. So there's three different types of uh, uh, account descriptions, right? The individual means that you are the only person that owns that account. You have joint, so you're owning it with somebody else or an authorized user, meaning that you are uh, listed on somebody else's account as an authorized user. You're, you don't have the financial responsibility. Um, the primary holder holds the financial responsibility. All right, so dispute status means if you were disputing this with the credit bureaus, they would show right here. Creditor type is a bank, mortgage company, mortgage company. All right, so nine times out of ten, because it's a real estate account, it will be a mortgage company. Uh, account status, right? If it's open, closed, or if it's in derogatory, if it's collections or charge offs. Payment status is current, right? Could say thirty days behind. Could be um, current now, thirty days. Right, we'll most likely see something while we move uh, to the next section. Uh, a creditor's remark. So let's just say this person closed or paid account zero. So let's just say this person uh, disputed it because he had a neck he had a negative mark. Well, I can say that the um, account holder disagrees. It's currently in dispute. So this is where you'll see those remarks by SunTrust. All right, the payment amount. So if he was if he was active. This would be, you know, a thousand dollars a month, two thousand dollars a month, whatever that is. The last time you made a payment, right? Last payment there. The term, right? So this is a thirty-year mortgage, three hundred sixty months, right? So if it was a five-year term, it would be sixty months. So past due amounts, if it was ever late, this would show right here. Account type, conventional real estate mortgage, right? Makes sense. And the credit limits, which is not a political in this thing. So this is so far as a good account. Let's move forward. This is a Quicken Loans. So this is also a mortgage, and this one is open. Okay, so account number, everything's the same. These two are not reporting, last verified, date of last activity. Right, a little bit of diff uh, discrepancy between the two. Uh, date reported. Right, that's the same except for this one. Date opened, close, but not the same. 
balance owed, that is the same. It's still open, so it won't be a close date. All right, this is our account rating, it's open, right? so it's live. This is joint, most likely with a spouse or another partner. Um, it's in good standings. You can see just right off the back, just by looking at this, you'll know if there's a either yellow or red mark. I'll tell you if it's a negative status in a quick view. Okay, so finance, personal, mortgage, mortgage. So again, um, so Quicken Loans is, needs, usually has an account with each one of these credit bureaus, right? They're called a data furnisher. So they are furnishing data to the credit bureaus and uh, the credit bureaus is just really a, um, a data center, right? And they don't uh, report by themselves. They need to have somebody tell them. So in, in this equation, Quicken Loans is, is reporting to the credit bureaus, all right? And so a lot, a lot of credit repair companies, they look at these small little details Okay, and if it's in, in a negative status, they can test that there's multiple ways of correcting items on a credit report. And the number one, according to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, states that everything has to be factual there. So there could be some ammunition for a credit repair company to dispute if they know what they're doing. Okay, so everything else looks pretty much the same. Open, right, monthly payments, right? It was a little bit different from over here because this one's closed. 1784. Yeah, last time he made a payment. Right, look, look, a little bit different. So it seems like they reported um, data last report. You know, it's the same month, but last payment is a little bit different here. So they're not reporting accurate information. All right, so it looks like this person has another open account, and it's also a mortgage. This guy has multiple, multiple homes. Okay, so. Essentially, we look at all these different, different factors that can go into this. Now let's just go to another one here. This one is closed. Looks like this is a home improvement loan. Okay. And the high balance that, that when he started was 4,000. Payment in mode, uh, balance is zero. He's, he wasn't in a negative status. So this is a revolving account, right? Let's just say this was a home improvement. So most likely this is an installment because it's 48 months term, right? This is a personal loan, sales finance. So this is most likely a personal loan that he took on to help with a home improvement loan for his house. So now this is a, a credit card account. All right, so now let's look at the details here. So high balance 2,200. So his limit is 5,000, but he doesn't owe anything. So he's at a 0% utilization, that's great. Remember, you don't want to go above 30% utilization because that's going to start to affect your score negatively. This payment history is clean. You can see here on the green individual account. So he owns this, he's not joint with anybody else. Date opens. All right. So this is the age factor. Remember, one of the things with the perfect credit formula is that the age factor of these accounts makes a big difference. So he's had this for about nine years. This is a very strong account, but he only has a $5,000 limit. Okay, moving forward. He's an American Express. Okay, so the last reported was on 2014. The high balance of this, $2,000 limit. This is closed. Looks like it's in good standings. They didn't, look, they didn't look like he had it for very long. Okay, so close dates, one, so January 2014, the last reported. Is it, uh, Date opened, oh no, never mind. He had it for four years, right? Close to about four, four years there. Close to about three, actually. All right, moving forward. All right, so this is an open account again. So the highest balance is there, 3,000. So and at any time of him owning this account, the highest time that he has carried a balance is $3,000. That's what that means. Monthly payment 28, balance is only 592. If you look at the ratio, he is around maybe a 5% utilization. That's very good. Okay, this is a charge, a charge account. Okay, so that means that even though it's under the revolving family, this is a charge card. So meaning that you have um, until the end of the month to pay it off in full. 
is it's not revolving. Revolving me, it's ongoing, right? A charge card means that you have, you know, you can spend a higher limit, you can spend more with your limit, and you have to pay it off at the end of the month. This is a retail, right? This is Synchrony Bank. This is very well known as um, you'll see a lot of different uh, Synchrony Banks and the slash Amazon, slash Home Depot, slash, you know, so there's maybe a thousand different companies that use Synchrony as the bank, but they brand it with themselves. Through, through Amazon in this case. All right, moving forward. So JP Morgan, right, typically this will be a flexible spending card, which is a revolving $5,000 limit. Looks like he was in good standings. So account closed by consumer. So that's a big no-no, right? So he's lost his age factor, 2011 is when he opened it and now he closed it, you know, just shortly after. So it looks like he only had this for about a year or so, a year and some change. So not a big, big deal, but you don't want to close your accounts. Well, in his case, because he has 75 accounts, so you know, he, if you have uh, very little amounts of, of, of accounts on your, your credit, it's going to hurt you more to close your accounts versus you having 30 accounts. Okay, and if you close one, it's not going to affect you as much. So know that know that difference, right? It's depending on on the amount of accounts that you have and the amount of limits. And if you close a small one here, maybe five thousand for whatever reason, he closed us. Let's move forward. This is Barclays, typically a revolving account, so it's a credit card, three thousand dollar limit, also closed by him. So the close date is two thousand twelve. He opened it up in two thousand eleven. So had it for you know, a little bit less than a year. Date last verified. Okay, so there's another scenario, but look, he only had a $3,000 limit, but he's in good standings, right? No negative marks. So Capital One, whoever this Cabela's. So it's a $15,000 limit, right? Zero balance, it's a zero percent utilization. It's still open. Okay, and he's current, right? He's in good standings. This is great. This is a mattress firm. Okay, this is a charge account. All right, this one says uh, canceled by grantor. Okay, that means that this company, mattress firm, uh, didn't like him for some reason and they closed it. All right, so, so it's a home furnishing uh, store. So this could also be. No, this is not a revolving account because there's no term, right? That's how you understand if um, if it's a term loan or not, if they have months here, if it's revolving, it will be open-ended, all right? So, but he's still in good standing, even though it's closed by the grantor, all right? Account closed due to inactivity, see? Some of these people will will say the exact reason, and some will not, right? This, is, this comes back to one of those rules that we always describe is if you don't use it, you lose it. So... Um, the strategy here is that, you know, even if you go out there and, and buy a piece of gum for a dollar or $2, right, that's showing an activity. After six months of non-activity, your accounts go into inactive stage, right? A few more months after that, the grantor has the option to close it, right, for not using it. Why? Because they want to earn money off of you, right? They want you to spend, they earn the interest, right? But for that, they, they're, they're at risk. Let's move forward. So now American Express, this is closed, All right? Nothing derogatory, Account, uh, consumer request. So he closed it for some reason. And this is a couple date open 2010, date closed 2012, right? Had it for about two years. Right? Closed by consumer, JP Morgan Chase, All right? This, is, this was a pretty good card, right? 14,500, but for one reason, closed it. Right, date open 2014, close the three layer. Yeah, I wouldn't have closed this one. All right, so PNC, so he's a $10,000 limit. It's opened, zero balance, so he's responsible here. Nothing late, it's a flexible spending card. So what does this mean? Um, sometimes these banks will give you an option to, um, to have the flexibility of making your payments. Okay, so that's essentially that's what that means. Everybody has a different term, but this right here is a good standing in good standings. Uh, all right, so Barclays, this is also open. Look, this is an authorized user. 
Okay, so this is not his account because it's an authorized user. So limit 7,000, balance is zero, right? This is a great uh, account. So this was open in 2017, date reported 2020. So this is still open. So remember, every time that you add um, yourself as an authorized user, it can increase your score five to 20 points. Okay, but um, you are at the mercy of this person. If he maxes it out, it can affect you. But right now, this person is, is solid. Let's move forward. All right, this is closed. Nothing late here. Date of last activity. Date opened. Okay, so it's just closed by a consumer. City. All right, so here is it's a paid account. You had a 7,500 limit, zero balance, nothing late. Consumer request again. So this guy likes to pay. So this also could be a, a um, an element of, of credit card churning. Right? And what credit card churning is, is that you, every year, you go and you sign up for these, these cards to take advantage of their promos. Either you can you know, take your accounts and your, your balance or your history and your points and you can move it off to different cards or different um, different offers. There's a way, there's a strategy of um, taking advantage of those reward points, uh, especially if you have great credits. Okay, so this one right here, JP Morgan, another, another account, $2,000 limit, it's open. It's a credit card, zero balance, but he only has $2,000 limit. He's had this account for let's just say more about a couple of years. All right, consumer closed, nothing late, paid, just like normal. All right, so pretty much the same, right? Account closed, zero balance, thirteen thousand dollar limit. It's interesting, huh? That you see this account has been paid, but you know the two thousand dollar limit. They gave him thirteen thousand here. Wonder why. Right, so there'll be multiple different reasons. FMB Omaha, very famous credit card company, $2,500 limits, still open. And he's had this since 2010, date report of it. So yeah, these, these guys had this for, you know, over uh, a little bit over two, uh, 10 years. It's always a good practice that every three to six months that you ask for your credit uh, limit increases by only doing it as a soft inquiry. You want to be... Um, establishing better, um, better results and, and establishing higher credit limits for each one of your, your creditors, right? You want these to be all 10, 15, 20, $30,000 limits, right? This gives you, gives you some strength, right? This one's also closed, closed by a cancel, uh, by a consumer, 7,500. Moving forward, you see, you guys see the pattern here? Okay, so this guy, it, it tells a story about about himself. This guy's a little bit older, so he has a little more history. But you can see there's a pattern here, right? Con, you know, consume, uh, closed by consumer. And every single time that you apply for new credits, an underwriter at a bank um, is, is reviewing this information, right? This is telling them a story without even speaking to, to the client. But every, every few years, he, he closes an account, okay? What do you think is gonna happen if they see in your uh, personal information, if you have 15 addresses, right? If you have 15 addresses, and every few years you start moving, it tells a story to an underwriter, right? This is where I say, if you clean up those addresses and mistype names and socials, et cetera, you can actually increase your score about three to five points. Okay, so let's go back to where we're at. 18, open home. Manhattan Express closed. All right, City, look at here. All right, so City, we have 130 late, right? See, I spot that right away because it's orange. So let's see what happened here. And date last verified, balance owed zero, $3,500 limit, count not disputed. So he hasn't disputed anything with the City here. It looks like last year, Right, July of 2019, that something happened. Right? This is a prime example of why you need to put all your bills on auto pay. And also make sure you have money to pay for it. So 
this little 30 day late probably cost him anywhere from 50 to 100 points. Right, I'm gonna say that again, 50 to 100 points by one 30 day late. It takes you forever to build up your credit score. It can drop in a snap of a finger if you're not careful. And this person specifically has so many different accounts, right? How are you gonna manage that? You could actually change your payment due dates for every single one of your accounts, right? What I do is that I have my accounts on the 1st and the 15th. So on the 30th, I pay down the ones on the, on the 1st, let that sit and report, use the ones on the 15th and vice versa, right? So you could be systems dependent, not human dependent by just taking these little small tips and correcting it as is, right? Let's move forward, right? Same thing happened here. So account closed by consumer, probably got pissed off that he had his 30 day late. He, he uh, was probably arguing with them, right? But he still paid it off in zero, $3,000 limit. So his account's closed. But you can see there's not, the information is not being reported correctly, right? Every single bureau has something different, right? This is 811, this is 8181. Okay, so this is probably something that we can dispute and correct because it's not factual. And look how look how old this account was. Date open, 1995. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, another another real quick uh, tip right here. You can see these three years late, but it's also here. A lot of these different credit bureaus will have different indicators that can tell you exactly what's going on in in um, just by visually looking at the at the screen. All right, so this is paid, so it's closed, $7,000, that's fine. All right, open, $21,000 limit. Looks like everything is fine. Bank of America is closed by consumer. All right, this one's open. So this is a balance owed. Okay, so look at this. So there's a $10,000 balance and a $14,000 limit. Right, so that's close to what, 80%, 75% usage. Okay, so even though his individual accounts are zero balances and he has you know, uh, lots of different um, flexibility with, you know, if you did a balance transfer, it's not going to phase scenario, but when you have one account that has 75% usage, that could actually uh, decrease your score we're from 20 to 30 to 50 points. So it's not just the overall credit utilization, it's the individual utilization as well. Okay, so by paying this down, or you can do a balance transfer between accounts and just even out the playing field. Right? You see how this is all coming together. All right, so Bank of America, right, open $2,000. Okay, so he's around what, 30% usage? He's, he's on that, he is on that, um, you know, that 30% mark, which if it goes into more, it could hurt more. But in this case, I would like to reduce it. And a lot of times you, you'll have these, these uh, promos with these banks, right? $5,000 limit, right? 0% for 12 months. You want to take advantage of that free money. However, the banks don't know. If you want new credit, they don't know that it's a 0% promo. And that's why you're maxed out. So you gotta, you gotta keep that in consideration. All right, this is $1,500 limit, it's opened. All right, look at this, Capital One is closed and it's not reporting to, to these two arrows. But it's still in good standings, it was, it was current. Okay, open, 56500 limit. All right, you guys see the pattern here. Right, discover, this one is closed. Same thing, closed by consumer. Closed by, oh, this one's open. Right, closed by consumer, and standing, same thing. Right, this one's open, $13,000 limit, pretty good. All right, so this one's a business credit card, you guys. See, look at this. There's a couple different accounts, right? Capital One and Discover, even though if you have a business, even you, because business credit doesn't show up on your personal credit. 
okay? But there's a certain amount of accounts that will report to your personal and to your business. Capital One is notorious. I don't recommend getting a business account with them because if you need to use this for your business purposes and you're maxed out, it's gonna affect your personal score. You always wanna keep your personal credit clean. All right, this is another one, very similar. This is open. Oh, this guy has so many different accounts. I feel like I'm going on forever. All right, so this guy, $18,000 limit and closed it. So not so good. Yeah, this one is also closed. Target open, 2000 zero balance. So zero balance, you can see that after you've seen this, I've uh, seen so many different credit reports. You can see the you know, how fast you can go through them, right? So account closed due inactivity. You can use it. You lost it. Synchrony Bank, uh, loss of stolen. Oh, this is still open, 3,000. Fifth Third Bank. So it's a revolving account. Closed due inactivity. Still in good history. An active account with an activity. All right, look, we have another late here, 30 days on March. So still not, so he, he did not dispute it, right? He's not working with a credit repair company, has been paid, and it was closed in an activity. But in March 2019, probably missed it because of not putting it on auto pay. So look, you know, sometimes you'll see this where there's two different types of accounts that you may think it's two accounts, but it's actually the same one. Okay, so you want to match it up by, but look at that, right? Account number here says it starts with 80. This one starts with 47. So you're going to match up last verified 6131. So 2000 dollars limit. So there's some discrepancies there. Whatever date. Look at this February or March. Which one is it? Right. We can test this to probably win this, this reporting in factual data. Open 35, Bank of America, open $9,000 limit, open zero balance, okay, good standings, zero, open 12, right? So remember this, I told you, Synchrony Bank, this one's Lowe's. Okay, so Synchrony is the bank, this is the, the vendor, right, or the store. Wells Fargo, open 13,000, good standings. Closed, consumer closed. City, open 11,000. Okay, as where I told you, this guy, so Scuba reports dispute resolve, consumer disagrees. Okay, so if something happened and that consumer disagreed, this is, this is the remarks the Citibank put on there. Okay, this is open 3,000. Open 4,000, zero balance, zero, 4,500. So closed, all right, zero, closed, 1,600. Capital One, open. I think I've ever seen somebody with so many uh, credit cards before. Okay, 13,500. Closed by grantor, didn't use it, we lost it. And activity. Okay, now we have an auto loan. Okay, so this is an installment section. Right? So American Honda Finance. Um, this was closed a long time ago. All right, it's a self um, utility self reported. So with Experian, you have something called Experian Boost, where you can add your utility bills. And if you're paying them on time, they'll report a positive account. So for some of you who are building on your credits, you need to establish new accounts this might be a good way but it's only only happens for for experience bmo is the bank account closed and this is another one for experience boost telecommunication experience boost okay close account but look is the auto loan secured loan Okay, so this, this could have been, yeah, okay, this is a personal loan, right? This, this was a secured loan, not an unsecured loan, right? Credit cards are unsecured. So this guy most likely put up money, 
Okay, it looks like it's a $9,000 higher balance, but it doesn't show what the limit was. So it looks like he put some type of collateral up, could be stocks, could be bonds, could be cash, he gives the bank cash and they give him back a secured loan, you know, for 60 months. Okay, so this is a good example. Okay, unsecured loan, see that difference? All right, yeah, secured and unsecured. This is an open account for 34,000. Looks like he took out some cash here. Okay. So Coastal Federal Credit Union. Right? And you see that FCU means a credit union, right? That CU. This is an auto loan that it opened. So this was a $29,000 car or a loan that he got. The 06,000. It's paying on time. Oh, look at this. He has some collections. Okay, so it looks like he has collection. Let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into this, this category. Uh, he just owes a very small amount, $185. And collection agencies are required to disclose who the original creditor is, right? So if it's a medical bill that has not been satisfied. Okay, so account status is closed. It's a collection charge off. You see here the status. Okay, so he still owes his money. Okay, usually they would say the account holder who owns it, but it does not show. Right, same thing here. So other collection agencies, under $43. So American Express, American Express closed. Okay, all right, so this is where if he had any public records, it would be listed right here, right? If it's a bankruptcy. And this is all the inquiries that um, that are listed for about two years. Okay, These all the ones from different credit bureaus and the date and who the creditor is. All right. So if you're ever disputing, if you're ever disputing um, inquiries, you cannot dispute if you have a live account. So if he has an account with Coastal Credit Union, if he disputes it, it could be closed. And it's down for two years. And so these are all credit contacts. So if you ever decided to dispute or write a complaint and needs to write them for some reason or call them, all the information is right here. Okay, so right here is a tutorial on how to read a credit report with stock credit.